Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel. Peter likes books. Okay, it is Friday, and Friday I'm in love. And when it's Friday of the week of the book tags, and you don't know, <laughs> what should I do for my book tag? Well, of course you go to Maddie Grimes over here who left a comment on my video and said, Peter, yes, Maddie. <laughs> You should do the ruler of tags book, or tag, book tags, whatever. I would love to hear your answers. Well, Maddie, today is your day. Come on down. <laughs> I'm such a freak. Okay. So anyway, the original was designed, created by Ariel Bursette. Bursette. Ariel Bursette. I'm losing it. I love Ariel Bursette so much. I love her because she puts together that booktubeathon. If she never did another thing in her entire life besides that booktubeathon together, I would just be fine with the gal. I'd be like, okay, girl, you did your, you did your deed for the world. So anyway, let's just uh, get right into this. I'm going to read the beginning of it for you. It says, if you are the ruler of books, what of world would you create? Oh, this is going to be so crazy. I hope you like my new tag. I had so much fun with it and I am so excited to share it. Thank you, Ariel. Okay. She tag Raylene, Claire, and Amanda. Okay. Number one, if you are the ruler of books. Okay. Um, number one, what would you make everyone read? Well, of course I would make everybody read To Kill a Mockingbird. Are you new to my channel? I mean, it's my all-time favorite book, and I think it's the most important book ever. I believe it is the great American novel. And um, there have been a lot of great books that have been written. But I think, you know, it really makes, as you, okay, as you read it as when you're younger, it makes you learn how to be an adult. And when you read it as an adult, it makes you remember the importance of childhood and innocence as far as compassion and kindness in the world. And of course, there's a million other things that are wonderful about it. It's not to mention just the characters. Plus, I think it's such a good example of Americana at that time. Does that make sense? So, yeah. Number two, what would you abolish in book construction? I don't really even know what I... Is that like a booktube word that I don't know? There's so many booktube words that I don't know, like magical realism. Like, I, I know what magical realism is now, but I have to tell you, I had to watch, I think, actually, Ariel Bissett did a whole video about magical realism. I think that's how I learned about it. But I didn't really understand what it was. So is book construction one of those things that I don't get? Um, baby, my country's free. My book world is free. You can do whatever you want to do. I don't really care. So... Number three, what author, what author, what author would you commission to write you any book? Okay, <laughs> so many people are going to be like, what, seriously? I would, um, I should really think about this actually before I answer. I would commission John Green to write the sequel to Fault in Our Stars. Now listen, okay, listen. I know a lot of people are going to be like, well, there's not supposed to be a sequel. Yes, I know. A lot of people are going to say, how can there be a sequel without Augustus Waters? I know, okay, but there could be. And John would have to get very, very creative with that, right? I mean, maybe it would be a, a prequel. Who knows? It could be, I guess, instead of a sequel, but maybe it'd be a prequel. I don't know what he's going to write, okay? Maybe it'd be about the parents. Who cares, okay? It doesn't really matter, but he has to write it. And uh, he's made us wait long enough for his next book. Damn, you know? So uh, it's like my, one of my all-time favorite books from the last five years is Ava Delaria's uh, Love Letters to the Dead. Oh, have you guys read that book? Oh, my God. It's fantastic. I see it at Half Price Books all the time. I'm like, I, I see it up there, and I just want to stick it out like the, the old maid, and when you're playing old maid, and I want to go, who is giving this book away to half price books? My God, this book is fantastic. But I, three years ago, I wrote her and said I wanted an art copy of her new book. This was before I was even a booktuber, right? Because I just wanted an early release, and her publisher was like, oh, it comes out next spring. She got no book out. I haven't seen it out. What happened to her? So anyway, I hope nothing tragic now that I'm talking about it. But, um... So I would love to see John Green have to write a sequel to that. And listen, a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this one, and I don't really care. But back in the day, Fault in Our Stars was a really big deal on BookTube and on YouTube just in general. And, um, you know, I believe, and I, I love, I loved, I should say I loved Fault in Our Stars when I first read it, as I did all the John Green books. I mean, they're kind of trite now, and I understand that. I still love them. Um, but, you know, like, 
I think the you guys are like, this is just one answer, Peter. Get it over with. I'm trying to, but like, I have a lot of things to say, teacher. Don't shush me. Okay, so anyway, um, I think the fault in our stars is kind of like, it's what got people, especially me, re-interested in reading young adult, and it kind of put contemporary young adult on the map. I know, people are going to be like, that's not true. Well, I feel like it is. And I feel like it did for, like, you know, Harry Potter got so many people reinterested in reading again. And I think The Fault in Our Stars got a lot. I mean, it was on number one on the bestseller list for, like, two years straight, okay? So I think it got a lot of people reinterested in reading again. I think it becoming a movie, also a movie that was successful, showed younger generations, you can write books about what you love, and they could possibly turn into movies you could become a rock star. John Green showed that in 2015, or I think it came out in 2013 or something like that, that you as an author can be a rock star. And I think that is fantastic. Don't we as, I mean, we all of us as readers, writers want to be rock stars. So you guys are like, oh no, not a, if you could be a rock star for, if you could walk through the mall and people would be like, oh my God, that's John Green. I mean, he gets that, you know, for creating characters. I think that's amazing. People are celebrities for a lot more foolish stuff, okay? You should be a celebrity for writing a book. I think that's awesome. Okay. Uh, number four. What book would you demo to the library basement to make room for new books? <sighs> Must we discuss Mary Kay New Chomps? Uh, this is where it ends one more time. So tired of discussing that book. Listen, okay? I don't know who those people paid at Barnes & Noble to get that and Ruth Ware up on the top of all those lists. But that book and any book by Ruth Ware that I have read, because I read the beginning of Into the Woods or whatever it's called, and I read The Woman of Cabin 10, they're both of them a bunch of junk. They just are, okay? I do not understand for the life of me. And I know people that know her are very upset with me for having such a strong opinion. I'm sorry, okay? I just don't get her gig. And it's not that, like, it, it isn't that she isn't my, like, cup of tea. It isn't that, like, I don't really, like, just her character development is, you know, not what I like, or she writes, she writes bad mysteries. I'm sorry. They just are. They're bad mysteries. Okay. They're not developed well. They're not interesting. There are people that are independent authors out there that are publishing on create space on Amazon, whose mysteries are a hundred times better than Ruth Ware. And she's on the bestseller list at Barnes and Noble. Tell me that there's some fairness to the world. That's a bunch of hocus pocus bullshit. These Amazon bookstores are about to come out in the United States, and I'm telling you, they're going to change some shit out there because I bet you anything you can pay to get your book on a bookshelf. I bet you anything because every author wants their book on a bookshelf, and I bet that's going to change a lot about this. That Mary Kay Nick Chomps, I talked enough about her book. I'm not talking about that. This is where it ends anymore. I think that book is, I just don't like it, okay? I just, there's nothing to me about that book that I liked. And then, um, oh, Joey Graceffa, Children of Eden, he can keep out there. I don't really care. Uh, but that autobiography of his, I, I don't know. It was, it was my pixelated life. <laughs> okay, you guys are like, you are really getting heated in this one. I know. Number five, what cover artist would you commission to make a mural? Do you guys like really know cover artist names? Seriously? Mm, I don't know who I would do. I don't know any cover artist names. Well, I love the, the person that did the cover of Eliza and her monsters. And I would probably make um, her or him. I don't know who did it, so I don't want to misgender. But um, I would probably, uh, that even showed my ignorance, didn't, didn't it, with like they, them. I mean, there could have been whatever. However you identify yourself, it, whoever you are, okay, I would probably even commission this for my own house. I would love a painting of my love affair with my husband. I think that would be fantastic to have on the wall of my house. And all, of course, my life story all around the wall that would enclose our kingdom, which would be called a crooked king kingdom. Oh, there's already that out there. <laughs> okay, number six. What character's face would you put on a coin? Seriously, I'm not a character, but come on now. Uh, king of the castle. Queen of the castle. Uh, <laughs> what character's face would I put on, the, on a coin? Um... Holden Caulfield, <laughs> Scout. Who else? Oh, Tiny Tim, of course. Who else? Tiny Tim would get a penny. Um, <laughs> I mean, 
Let's see. Would there be anybody else? PB, who else would we pick? He said, Lucky Santangelo from Jackie Collins Lucky. She goes on a dollar bill. She did, sure does, PB. You have good answers. Good answers. Good answer. Good answer. This is like Family Feud, booktube. Oh, I'm doing that booktube. Don't steal it. I'm doing that book tag. Don't steal it from me. I know you people out there, y'all, bunch of thieves, okay? Number seven, what book would you award the ruler of books? It says 2016, but I'm going to say 2017. Well, I would award the ruler of books 2017 to, this should be no surprise to anybody, definitely not Six of Crows, I'm struggling getting through that, to Angie Thomas for The Hate You Give. Oh! Such a fantastic book. I love that book so much. That was a really fun tag. The ruler of tags book. The ruler of tags book. Nobody does my tags when I tag them. So you don't get tagged in my video. Um, I hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend. Hey, listen, 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 okay? I am doing a super big pajama party on my You Now stream tonight. It's listed below. It's a free app on your phone. You can go to it on your computer. You can go in there. We just chat about all kinds of stuff. It's real fun. So come, wear your pajamas, bring a fountain soda, snacks, whatever, and we're gonna have a good time. If you're watching this and it's too late, I go on every night. So anyway, I love you guys and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.